influence on issues around around being the first woman at wealth and, and so on. Would you like to reflect a bit on on those issues and how you think they may have changed over time? Certainly, uh, heaps better than it was. I don't think anybody would say, no, you can't have maternity leave <laughs> today. Um, I, I guess um, I, if I'd had a preference, I, it, it would have been nice to be back um, about 10 years <laughs> in the middle of the pack, maybe. But I will say that there's been some really, really um, powerful women that um, have gone ahead of me. There were some working in Australia and but Michelle Veeman was, was very important in Canada. She was really the leading female ag economist of, of her day. And at our department, oddly, had two women as department chair. She did it for 10 years and I did it for six years. And it was an almost completely male department. So that was kind of interesting. But I, it, it, it's not comfortable necessarily being first. Um, and even if people are open and accepting at an intellectual level, it doesn't mean that sometimes the, the expectations don't come back and smack you in the face. I guess sometimes you get asked questions that aren't appropriate when you're, when you're being interviewed for some okay. reason or other, and you think that, that should not be coming up. Yeah. So those kind of, yeah. kind of things do happen. Are you able to offer pearls of wisdom advice for young women getting established in the discipline now? Or do you feel too disconnected from their generation? No, no? I, I don't feel disconnected. Yeah. I mean, I think if you teach, and I teach yeah. a lot. I teach so, three courses a year. So what do you say to young women? And I, only undergraduate, by the way, at the moment. Um, yeah, and, and it's with my own grad students that I agonize the most. So the ones that are... Um, incredibly bright and doing master's degrees come to me and say, well, should I do a PhD or not? Mm. Intellectually, should you do a PhD? Of course you should. Mm. If that's the only reason you're doing a PhD. A, a male student in the same era comes to me and has been really productive and yeah. loves economics and you know the whole bit. I, I don't even hesitate, sure, do a PhD. Yeah. The social networking behind the person is very different. So I still, I'm a little uneasy about women who are, say, in their mid-twenties thinking about doing a PhD. Are they going to get their family saying the greatest thing you could ever do? Or is their family going to look at them in some puzzlement and say, aren't you ever going to start having kids and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera? Mm -hmm. And I worry that that makes it harder for women. But would you let that change your advice today? I can only say that um, I, <laughs> I, I break the advice down. Right. You have to make sure that you are going to have a supportive social yeah. environment. So if your partner or, which by the way could be any gender, doesn't, yeah, yeah. but if your partner and family are going to be um, negative about it, just just recognize that that's going to make it a bit harder for you you're not going to and i and it's not perfect it's not mm -hmm. all hunky dory mm -hmm. um on the professional side either the, yeah. there will be some hurdles but i don't like having to have a different conversation i'm disappointed to be ending my career thinking that there still is a little bit of a different yeah. conversation yeah. and i really thought it would be gone by now so i find that very dispiriting in the main, though, I'm totally supportive, and um, my female students all come to me to check out their um, career plans. And I, you know, sometimes you have a, a people who have been socialized to always be nice, and you have to rough them up and make sure they're not going to always be nice. Right. But there, are, so there are differences. There are definitely differences, and they haven't seemed to have gone away completely yet. Is it, is it a bad thing to be an agricultural or a resource economist if you're a female? Absolutely not. No. It really enriches, I think, the whole discipline of economics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that the fact that people have slightly different value systems or slightly different perspectives on things. I, the professor from New South Wales that was here talking about behavioral economics is yeah. just 
refreshing. Gigi, Gigi Foster. <laughs> yes, yes, just just breathtaking, yeah. really, yeah. and completely different yeah. um, viewpoint about things. Yeah. And so I think it's we're important, and I think that it's rewarding. Yeah. I think the work is rewarding. Yeah. Is it going to be a perfectly seamless, um, same treatment thing? No. Thank you, Ellen. That's been really wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That's something that's quite personal, and uh, really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks.